Lord, everybody. Amen. Uh, we're going to get a special announcement for the uh, progressive dinner. Always uh, excited to, to do that. So this year's progressive dinner is going to be on September the 28th. Uh, the time is to be determined. This year, the theme is presidents and first ladies. Everyone 18 and up is invited. It says here there will be personal invitations to come. It was explained to me what that will be is uh, for those that sign up, there will be personal invitations, and you will be requested to sign up as a, or sign up, to dress up as a certain, the president and the first lady that you're designated, if I'm not mistaken. It's, okay, so if you sign up on the thing, you're going to get an invitation, and they're going to say you need to come as Nancy and Ronald Reagan or so on and so forth. So don't go out and buy uh, a Trump wig because you may not be Trump. So just wait for your invitation, and I'm sure there'll be more explanation on that as, as we get closer. But the sign-up sheets are on the bulletin board, and they are in need of three houses to host. And uh, for each house, there are slots for people to sign up and help. There's also a sign-up sheet for an acting crew. Skits will be performed throughout the night, and we need volunteers. Any questions? Uh, contact Sister Rihanna Coger. So that's always a good time. I'm excited about uh, being a part of that. And, and to those of you, if you've never been a part of that, you won't. You don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out on the progressive dinner. Invite someone. Invite a coworker. Invite a friend. What a, a way, an opportunity to reach out and to, uh, to a friend, a coworker, a family member, and invite them to be a part of it. Invite them to to let them know, hey, we as apostolics, we can have some fun. We can get crazy. And we can still keep it clean. Amen. But also, uh, looking forward to that. And also tonight, we have a couple of prayer requests for uh, the jail ministry for Stephanie, uh, salvation and healing. And for Darius and Dietrich, they have a stomach flu. And if you have a need tonight, just lift your hand to the Lord. And we're going to take each and every need to the Lord tonight that's in this place. Dear Heavenly Father, you see Stephanie, Lord. You know the need of salvation. You know the need of healing that's in uh, her life tonight, Lord God. I ask that you would reach down and touch her, Lord, whatever the need is. You see Darius and Dietrich, the need for healing within their bodies. You know every need in this house, God. You know every situation. You know every circumstance, Lord, before we brought it into this building, Lord. I ask that your perfect will would be done, Lord. I ask, God, that you would touch this service, that you would put a special anointing, Lord God, upon this service. Let our ears be anointed, Lord God, so that when your preaching come forth, Lord God, that our ears would receive it, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for the remainder of this service, Jesus. I pray, God, that somewhere, Lord God, we can get in contact with you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We need your presence. We desire your spirit. We desire your touch in this service tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's worship with the praise team. Let's sing with all of our hearts. Let's lift our hands, clap our hands, lift our voices. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. Let's just pull out all the stops. Let's just, let's just come in one mind and one accord. Put aside everything that may have happened to you last week, everything that might have happened today, and let's just get our minds focused on one thing, and that is Jesus Christ. He is worthy to be praised. He is great. He is mighty. He is holy. We need you tonight. Tonight, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Let's worship with the praise team.
stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working and even 
must break the chains. Find the devil in Jesus' name. Tonight, we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Glory, hallelujah. This is what we've come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chains. Find the devil in Jesus' name. Tonight, we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Praise Him. Praise Him. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight, tonight we got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Strongholds break the chains. Find the devil in Jesus' name. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundations in pain. Glory, hallelujah. This is what we've come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chains. Find the devil in Jesus' name. Tonight we got a right. Shake the foundations with praise, praise Him, praise Him. The Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Tonight we got a right to shake the foundations with praise.
worship. At this time, we're going to have the choir come up, get behind them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. How many are glad that he's the author and finisher of your faith? He holds our tomorrow. Hallelujah. Worship with us as we sing this song, for our God is holy.
Righteousness you judge and make one. Your eyes are flame fire, from your mouth comes a sharp to
Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. My memory serves me right. It was two full plus years that Joseph found himself chained to a rock in a dungeon and to all things that you could see in the natural it looked like it was over that he'd been forgotten and uh, there was no hope dark dank wet long long hours Seemingly enough to drive you crazy. And then one day, he heard a rattle at the gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A guard walked in and said, Joseph, you've been requested by the king. Some of us in this service tonight, it's been a long, dark couple, three years. It seems like there's, I don't know what, why, I feel this in, in the Lord. Right? I'm not the preacher tonight, eh? uh, but I feel this right now. Amen, amen. It's been a long time, and you look at your situation as if there's no hope. I'm coming to church out of mechanics. I'm just doing it because it's the right thing to do, but... They sang the song a while ago, you're about to break out. Amen. And this is what the Lord spoke to me a while ago. You're, you're about to break out. That prison that you've been in, those chains are about to fall. Amen. You're about to be loose. Come on. There's a ray of sunshine fixing to shine into your world. Your dungeon is about to have a window thrown open. Hallelujah. And everything's going to be all right. Oh, thank you, Jesus, because you've been requested by the king to come into his court. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Ushers, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I'm supposed to take up an offering, not preach. Amen. But I'll tell you what, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. But I'll tell you, there's another presence here. And that is the presence of the enemy. We've been fighting the enemy ever since the beginning of this service tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been on the platform. I haven't spoken to anybody else about it, but I just can feel it. Amen. We've been talking in tongues. We've been praying back here behind the scenes. Amen. To combat the spirit of hell. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar, and the Bible said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, and we are the church. Hallelujah. There is victory in the house. There is overcoming power of the Holy Ghost in the house tonight. Hallelujah. 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 You are an overcomer. Amen. Jesus, we thank you once again for an opportunity to give to the cause of your kingdom and to the house of God and for the tithing and the offering that we are about to receive for your glory. We ask, Lord, that you would bless it with your anointing. Lord God, stretch it. Put it where it needs to go. Help us, Lord, to be faithful unto you. And we will be very, very careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor and the thanksgiving for the blessings that you have put on us, O oh God. And we return it back into your hands to do with what you see fit. And we thank you for it tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord bless you as you give as unto the Lord. Do it. 
let's receive our pastor. Let's get behind him. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord for the church family. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for the church family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and everything that's in that house. Hallelujah. Tonight I had came and prepared to bring something else, but I feel as a pastor, there's some things I still need. Sometimes it's not, uh, how can I better say it? Sometimes it's tough doing what a pastor has to do, but some things just need to be and known. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Through it all. Can we lift our hands one more time and just thank Him? We thank you, Lord. We appreciate the goodness of you. Appreciate the Holy Ghost and your presence inside of this place. I pray tonight that our ears will be open. I pray that, hallelujah, that our eyes will see. I pray that we'll be attentive, God, unto what you have to say. And that your perfect will will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just thinking in the back of my mind how to kind of open this up and how to kind of bring it forth tonight. And uh, I remember a preacher friend of mine uh, some time ago, a good man of God, a man that uh, had been in the ministry for some time. And uh, he had mentioned to me, and I remember my pastor also had mentioned to me, he said, you know, Brother Mascroft, there's sometimes there's things in a church that you're probably going to have to get behind a platform and, and hit it on the head every night. And I hope I don't have to hit this thing on the head every night. Praise the Lord. But uh, I believe there's times that there's some things you've got to nail down and there are things that need to be looked at, that need to be dealt with. And I believe the mo- one of the most important things is just being right with God being right with God. It makes a big difference. We can come in here and we can shout, run, do everything. But I'll say this, if we're not right with God, then something's wrong. Amen. And I thought his brother McVeigh, he was making a comment or two. And uh, um, I will say this, there's sometimes why we fight things. There's sometimes why we struggle through some things. And the reason for that is because some things ain't right. Amen. Please don't take me wrong. Hallelujah. And I, I believe definitely that uh, there's great victory that can be had tonight. But uh, tonight I kind of feel to go the direction that I had somewhat gone last Sunday. And uh, many of y'all know me as a pastor. I'm not one that hits the subject very much. But I'll say this if you don't preach it, people are going to think it's permissible. Understand? People are going to think it's all right. A uh, preacher had mentioned before, if you don't preach against sin, they're going to think it's all right after a while. And I'll say this. If you know anything about this Bible, I'm going to tell you right now, friend, God disapproves of sin itself. Amen. God does know what he's doing. And I want to talk about an area that I had begun to mention last Sunday night and maybe break it down a little bit more. I had one young man came up to me and said, you know, Brother Mascroft, did, did somebody ca- come and talk to you before church? Honest to God, with all my heart, nobody had came and talked to me at all. Amen. But God has a way of just unfolding things. Hallelujah. Take your Bibles with me tonight. And anything we do, we, we need to base it biblically. Praise the Lord. You, you can sit down because I want to take my time and I don't have to rush, okay? Amen. I'll get you out of here before midnight or one in the morning. 
And you know I won't be nearly that long. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we go to the book of Malachi. We go to the third chapter. And last week I had begun to start talking somewhat about tithing and about offering. And I know there's probably those tonight that you wish that this preacher would just shut up and sit down. Just being honest with you, okay? But I'll be frank with you. I wish there were people that would just do what the Bible says and just learn and do it. And you know what? The next time you come to service, you wouldn't have to worry about what this preacher's going to preach. Because if you're lining up to the Word of God, you have nothing to fear, friend. Amen. Uh, I had a, there was a pastor here before I had came, and uh, there was a handful of people. And uh, he had, I think, three messages that he preached. And uh, I thought, man, Brother Barkley, why are you preaching what you're preaching every time? Don't you got more messages than that? I don't know if he just had a hard-headed, bull-headed uh, group of stubborn people or what, but uh, uh, amen, I'll say this. Every time we came to church, there was not a night that he missed when it came to tithing and to offerings. Amen. You may look at me tonight and say, man, that preacher is out after the money. You know what, friend? You don't even know me. Come on, don't even judge me by one service or two service. But until you've known me for years and known this pastor, I'll say this right now. And there's some things. And I want you to know that as a pastor, uh, God's going to hold me accountable. And he's going to look me right in the face and he's going to say, hey, look, why didn't you preach some things I put in my book? And how come you didn't deliver the message? And then he's going to say, look, friend, I'm telling you right now, this blood is going to be on your hands instead of their hands. But, friend, once I deliver the message to you and I open up the word of God and give you scripture, what you do from that point on is up between you and God. And, friend, I'll say this. I want to do what God wants me to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've had many people that have from time to time, and we're going to go to Malachi in just a moment to the third chapter. But uh, I've had people saying that, you know, uh, when it came to tithing, that that was something underneath the law. Now, friend, I'll say this. You probably haven't searched your Bible or dug into it. But, friend, tithing was before the law. Understand, there was Abraham that paid tithes to Melchizedek. I want you to understand that there was Jacob and Isaac and the rest of them. Friend, this wasn't something that was just instituted underneath the law. And even during the law, it was preached. And after the law, friend, it carried on. Amen. I do know that there were some laws that were done away and carried away with. But let's go to Malachi, the third chapter tonight, and, and understand the Lord is talking to the nation of Israel, and uh, he's telling them, and, and I want to say this to us tonight, that I believe that God is saying, look, if you want victory, and if you want the joy, and you, you want the revival that you want, friend, then, then understand there's some things we're going to have to take care of and deal with, amen. Praise the Lord. Too many preachers don't want to deal with sin today. You know, just come on to church and come on, I'll tickle your ears and give you just a popular message. You know, there's messages that we need to know. And I'll say this, there's instruction. And uh, where is judgment going to start? It's got to start at the house of God. Amen. That's scripture. But in Malachi, the third chapter, and go to verse 7 with me if you would. The Bible says, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. He's basically saying, I've given you some laws. I've, I've asked you to uh, partake of it, to keep it. But understand, the days of your father, it's going away, and yet you haven't kept those ordinances. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? You know, you know, Lord, what, what is it that we have done? And uh, I believe that. And, and let me just kind of take my liberty and as a pastor from what knowledge I do have because I do have all the records of the church. I know what's what and I'm not here to use that against anybody. But uh, I will say this, you know, when we get the right heart and we get the right attitude about this whole thing, I believe that God is going to change our world and it's going to open up the windows of heaven, friend, and bless you in the way that you need to be blessed. Praise the Lord. But they asked the question, okay, Lord, wherein have we robbed thee? You know, and, um, and it goes on to say, but ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? 
Ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have ye robbed thee? The Lord makes the statement in tithes and in offerings. And I want you to pay attention right there, just in this one passage alone. Uh, understand it does say in tithes and offerings. And um, I will say this, we know as well that when it comes to tithes, that tithe is not the last tenth, but it's the first tenth. Understand when it comes to God, and we know that when it comes to an offering, that an offering is that which is above the 10%. The first 10%, I owe it to God. Understand, he blessed me with whatever he has given me and whatever increase he has given me. The first tenth is set aside. And if we remember, if we go back into the time of the Garden of Eden, the Lord had looked upon Adam and Eve and said, Look, you can have the whole garden, but there's one tree in that garden that I want you to leave alone, and it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But just leave it alone. Why? Because it's mine. God has always set aside some things that is his. And when we understand and we learn that law, we learn that principle that uh, God has said, look, this is mine. And he said, you know, I've given you the 90%. Just give me back the 10% that I can fulfill what needs to be done. And, and uh, I will say this, it's to take care of the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he says, he goes on to say in tithes and offerings, verse 9. He says, you are cursed with the cursed, for ye have robbed me. Many times people will ask themselves, you know, I just don't know why God isn't blessing me. I just don't know why I'm not getting anywhere when it comes to uh, my financial situation. Amen. I want to ask you a question. God's been faithful to you, but... Have you been faithful to God? Come on, have you been faithful to God? And many times people expect God to bless them and just to talk and to be honest, be frank, but they've been thieves before God himself and has done God wrong. Amen. But he says in verse 9, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, he says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And he goes further than that. He says, I want you to prove me and see if I won't do some things. Amen. I want to say to all of us tonight, I believe there's a God that's more up and above and willing to do and to meet any of our needs, to take care of any of our situations. Please understand me tonight. But friend, when this thing becomes one-sided, and I'm, I'm preaching to myself as well as to all of us tonight, you know, I'll say this, God doesn't like a thief. Amen. You know, we live in a day that we try to justify everything that's going on, and we got families to take care of, and we have bills that we got to get paid. Let me just be frank with you. Before I go out and buy myself a car, or before I go out and buy a house, I first look at my financial situation. The first thing I've got to look at, and that is, okay, can I take care of the Lord first? And if I can't take care of the Lord first, then I'll say this, I'm wrong in what I'm doing. Can I hear an amen in the house tonight? You might as well get with this preacher. Come on, you know I love you and care for you, but I'm not going to beat around the bush with you, friend. But he says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour out you a blessing, but there shall not be room enough to receive it. Well, Lord, I want you to bless me first before I do some things. This is just the other side that I know. I've seen people that say that I'll start paying my tithes when God blesses me. Why should he bless you? Because most people with that attitude in that situation, I must be frank, they never do it anyway. I've seen people make the statement, Lord, make me a millionaire and I'll pay my tithes and offerings. I'll be frank with you, friend. If you can't pay with the little that God gives you right now, how are you going to pay when God puts a lot more in your hands? Come on, God is faithful if you're going to be faithful. And if you want God to bless you, come on. Amen. 
I had mentioned that, you know, when I came up in this thing, there's some things I learned at an early age. And, and it was to be faithful unto God. Be faithful to the house of God. Live righteous. Do the things that's right. Live a holy life. In other words, do, do the things that God has asked to do. And, but I never, uh, can I better say, thought about cheating on God. This is my attitude in my mind. How can I outwit an almighty God that knows everything that's going on? My Lord. And friend, when I begin to look at things, I'm, the first thing I'm beginning to think, God, do I got everything covered? Is, is everything right? Because I'll say this. If I want to be taken care of, and the Bible goes on down just a little bit further, and he says in verse 11, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Lord is saying, if I'll do my part, then God is going to do his part. And God's going to look after me, friend. But I guess what's always been within myself is that there's always been conviction. And that conviction is, God, I don't want to do you wrong. And, and God, if I've done you wrong, I want to make sure I get things right. And I want you to forgive me. I like what Brother Bates had preached on Thursday night. And he brought across the thought, repent. He didn't get into baptism, friend. He didn't get into Holy Ghost. But he stopped and said, look, we're going to talk about repentance tonight. Friend, I don't care how long you had the Holy Ghost. I don't care how long you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You better learn that in your life, there's times you're going to have to learn to repent. Amen. Amen. My wife looks me in the face tonight and says, John, am I, is my tides covered? <laughs> I said, baby, your tides are covered up and above. Let me just give you a little bit up and above. It might do some of you wives good to look at your husbands. And say, is everything covered, honey? Mm. Boy, I feel something there. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? You know, there came a time that it came to Ananias and Sapphira. And they came before the man of God. And when they had gone in front of him, oh, yeah, they told the truth. But they didn't tell all the truth. And not only that, but both of them had the knowledge of what was going on and what was happening. And I'll tell you this. The man of God looked upon them and said, why? Why have you decided to lie against the Holy Ghost? Friend, I want to say this right now. I never want to lie before the Holy Ghost. And friend, when you come to that place to understand and get a conviction on the inside that there is a God that already knows everything. Come on, there's a God that keeps the best records there's ever been. You need to understand. You need to line up to what God has asked you to do. The Bible says in verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. And I would hope there's not anybody in this place tonight that, Lord, wherein have we robbed you? Amen. And uh, let me just be open and just be blunt. You're a guest tonight. I, I'll be honest with you, as a pastor, I don't like to be around the bush, play games. I'd just rather be open. I thank God for everyone that's faithful in this house. I really do. I thank God for everyone that is so faithful. But I'll say this, tithing, it's an act of faith and obedience. Amen. Tithing is not just a tenth, but it's the first tenth. And I'll say this. When you give it, it, it must die in your hands. Or friend, it's not going to benefit you in any way. Understand. 
because you're supposed to give it, friend, in the right avenue, in the right spirit of it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, and I've heard people say a lot of things. Well, that preacher's just trying to get rich. Get off your kick, friend. I said, get off your kick. If anybody goes down in this place, it's going to be me that goes down and my wife that's going to go down. So I'm just being frank with you. Don't play those kind of mind games with me, friend. You can call me a dictator. You can call me just what you want to call me. But I'll say this. I know better. And I'll say this. The majority of this people know better. Friend, people that get out of the mind of God and the will of God somewhere begin to miss some things. Hallelujah. Can I say this? You know, when we as the children of God do not do what is right, understand God's putting a curse on us. Amen. And uh, let me just talk to you as a pastor, okay? But uh, because I- I'm struggling, and what, I'm not, I understand God takes care of the preacher, but where I'm struggling is because I don't really like to have to talk about things like this, but I know I have to. Amen. You can call me wishy-washy. I've already had one person on the board come up to me and tell me I'm a softy. He's right. He's right. You know, I just got to toughen up when it comes to some things. But I guess I love people too much. And But you know what? It's just you got to do what you got to do. We had a preacher here before and. This individual said, you know, if it was a, if it was, if it was a former pastor, he would have called their name out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Brother Barkley. Amen. Good preacher. Good, good man of God, okay? He had his different ways, different strokes, different folks. Amen. And, uh, you know, Brother Barkley, I'm sorry, I'll be honest with you, I can't be a Brother Barkley. And some of y'all are saying tonight, praise the Lord, Amen. Brother Barkley was the type of man that you missed one week of tithing. He knew if you got paid weekly or bi-weekly or or monthly or just whatever. And he'd come up to you and he would say, you know, you you haven't paid your tithes and your offerings this week. Mm. Mm. I remember one man that was attending service here at that time and not here right now and, uh, not only that, but he played this game with me at different times, and uh, he, he, he would take his wallet, he would pull it out. Oh, Brother Barkley, I just forgot to put it in the offering. You know, as a pastor, you hear a lot of things. I said, you hear a lot of things. You know, and understand, I can understand maybe the first time something happens, but I'll say this. When it's repeatedly, I believe there's a problem in people's hearts. Catch on. Come on, I'm being honest with you. Amen. And uh, let me talk to you as a pastor to this church, okay? Amen. You know, I'm not as dumb as I look. You can laugh. But I'll tell you this, I can pull you in my office and you'll be crying about some things. Okay, because, you know, understand. What do you mean, preacher? Well, let me just be frank with you, okay? You know, I don't believe you skip a week or a month or two or three, four months and not pay your tithes. Come on. What do you mean, preacher? You know, some people got a mindset. Well, you know, this week I've got to go to Honolulu or I got to go to Okinawa. I got to pay for my way. You know, when I was raised in this thing and I came up, if you can't afford it and you can't take care of God, then you just don't go. Mm. Man, that might grind against the the will, but I'll be frank with you. You ain't got it. You just don't do it. You put God first, and God will take care of you, friend. But we come to that place, we're not like Abraham. I preached on him somewhat this morning, but we come to that place and we... Uh, begin to think and begin to, well, Lord, how come you're not doing some things? And the Lord looks back and says, well, because you've robbed me. You've taken what is mine that's not rightfully your own. Friend, it still applies in the day in which we're living. 
Like I said, it's not a popular message tonight, but I'm not going to beat around the bush with you. But, you know, if, if you go back in the Old Testament and you research, you're going to find out there was a 20% penalty if you didn't pay your tithes. And some people complain about paying tithes, and I'm glad we're not in the Old Testament, but I'll say this. They had three different tithes, three different tithes they paid. And that's another lesson within itself. Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, Malachi said, will a man rob God in tithes and offerings? Let's understand something. Tithing is basically to go and take care of the ministry. Amen. As a pastor, I do not take all the tithes. I'm going to make sure that the church goes forth. I'm going to make sure the bills get covered. I'm going to make sure the payment's taken care of, the insurance, the HOA, and everything else that goes along with it. And if there's anything left over, bless God. If there ain't, that's just how it is. Amen. Money's not my priority. Amen. But when it comes to tithing, tithing is to go to the ministry, and it's not supposed to go for the building. Did you hear what I said? Amen. You know, we can get into the Old Testament. And when we get into the Old Testament, it talked about the shekel of the sanctuary. It gets into the jeroth. And we begin to break all of that down. What we've understood is that it really boils down to about 5%. And it worked in the time of Moses. I'll say this. It works in the day in which we're living. But when it comes to giving, let me just kind of put it this way if I can. When you give your tithes to the Lord, that's something that's expected of God. And at that point, you really haven't started to give yet. You know, and, you know, if, forgive me, but if you're tight with money and a Scrooge, you're going to have a problem with it. Because you haven't really learned the blessing of giving or being a cheerful giver from what the scripture has talked about. Amen. But giving is after the 10%. Amen. Now, I want you to think about this, and I want you to take it to heart. Okay, as a pastor, I have looked at people and I have talked with people and I said, you know, if you can't do the 5%, at least do a dollar, two or three. But think about this. When you don't even do no offerings, you're not right with God. Hmm. Hmm. You know, Pastor, I never thought about it. I don't, it don't matter how we thought about it. What did the Lord say? He said, will a man rob God in tithes and offerings? He didn't just stop at tithing. And, and many times, understand, we, we'll say, well, preacher, I'll pay my tithes. But, you know, can I say this? Is it the preacher's job to pay for everything? For every function that goes on in the church? For every little thing that we purchase and buy? No, it is not. God didn't design it that way. But God designed it that there was a plan that was set up. And I'll say this. It works in a lot of churches today. And I'll tell you this. It is very, very effective. Amen. Now, the Bible says, and, and, and please don't take me wrong. Let me back up just a moment. I don't mean to try to rush tonight. but And I know sometimes I'm a little bit difficult and a little hard. But, you know, when you skip, you're wrong. I've had good, outright, good outright people come to me and say, Pastor, I'm running a little bit late. No problem. Just take care of it. But, you know, when we come to that place that we don't even ask God to forgive us. And we come to that place. We never say anything to the preacher. And then some people get bent out of shape because the preacher checks the books as he's supposed to do. Can I just put something out there? 
I'm glad I don't got 100 secretaries in this place. Aren't you glad we only got one? Sister Redinger had done it for years. Sister Ethel is doing it now. But let me say this. You think things don't affect her? Oh, nothing would bother Sister Ethel. You don't know her. Can I say this? If I was cheating on what I'm doing as a preacher and preaching what I'm preaching and not living what I'm preaching, what would she think of me? My God. You know, sometimes we all get a little behind and, and sometimes understand where it, it's been tough. But you know, it's one thing to take accountability. Mm. Can I say that? Accountability. Amen. Praise the Lord. Preacher, I don't like this kind of preaching tonight. Well, if you don't line out, you're probably not going to make heaven. I like what Brother McVeigh bro said last week. He made a statement. This is a heaven and hell issue. Mm, you didn't hear what I said. I said it is a heaven and a hell issue. Amen. And uh, well, preacher, um, do my kids need to pay tithes and offerings? Well, let me ask you a question. What does the Bible say about it? It says to train up a child in the way that it should go, that when it's old, it will not depart. Amen. You know, mama looked at this old boy, this young boy one day. And... Um, you know, it, it was tough making 25 cents an hour. I remember when the Lord boosted me up and we finally got to a place and began to work for a fruit stand and uh, began to make $1.60 an hour. Man, we moved up fast. It was $1.35 at first. Got a raise, went up to $1.60 an hour, making big money, man. Hey, Amen. I had a mama. You know my mama. She just passed away this last May, but... You know, she had a way of taking that finger and putting it in your face. You talk, you talk about four foot eleven, she'd stick it right up your nose if she had to. Come on, friend, four foot eleven, weighed one hundred and eighty some pounds. I'll tell you what, she was packed well, friend. When it came down to it, she said, "You know, boy, there's something you're going to have to learn, and what you're going to need to learn is that you're going to pay your tithes and you're going to pay your offerings." Mama, that's a lot of money. That's my money. No, it ain't your money. It ain't your money. I'll say this. God can take it away from you just as fast as you got it, if not a whole lot faster. And hey, God, the Bible had mentioned, I'll put holes in your pockets. Come on, friend. Every time you got that money flowing in, I'll let there be a hole in your pocket. It'll just flow out as fast as you put it in there. I'll say this, friend. You can't out-rob God. God knows how to get the best of everything. We come to that place. We better understand. Amen, and uh, so I learned some things at an early age, and that was be faithful to God, and God will be faithful back to you. I'm not, I probably mentioned this last week, but my wife and I had been married, and I'll say this, my wife stood home with the children, a little bit different day than what it is today, and I worked more than one job. There were times that I was working three different jobs just to put food on the table to keep the rent paid, be faithful to God, and do what needed to be done. Amen. Preacher, we don't have enough money for the family. Well, honey, get yourself a job and quit being so lazy. You know? You know, sometimes we're just not honest and truthful about everything. We try to make our situation sound so bad, and we've been nothing but a thief before God. We're just talking blunt, talking frank. Amen. And I remember there were times we wanted to go to Sacramento, which was about 90 miles away, to visit her mom and dad. And 
Sorry, the money's just not there. Seemed like it was work, 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 just doing everything that you had to do and just get the bills paid. And, but I'll say this, I was faithful to God. I was faithful to God. Only had the preacher come to me once in my lifetime and said, Brother Maskoff, how come you haven't been paying your tithes? I said, Brother Rushing, because I haven't been working for the last six, seven, or eight weeks. I haven't had any increase. Oh, okay, Brother Maskoff. You know, it's a good thing when you can look the preacher right in the eye and say, look, I haven't been working. I've been unemployed. But I'll say this. When you look the preacher in the eye, you know you're wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Can you hear, do you under, can you hear me tonight? Amen. And I'm just kind of hitting on some, some highlights tonight. And we go back to, a, to the children, Brother Maskoff. What age, what age is it that our children should start paying tithes and offerings? Well, the way that I was brought up, train them up in the right way. Friend, I'll say this right now. If you don't teach them right now, it's a good chance they're not going to do it later. There's some things, there's some principles. They can go to the store and buy every gadget of technology or just whatever there is. I'm going to tell you this. They're still a thief. And mom and daddy, you're wrong. I said you're wrong. Because, well, I let them do what they want to do. Well, then go ahead and let them run the streets, live like the devil, do what they're going to do. And I'll say this. God's going to hold you accountable for some things. Because the Lord put you over them and for you to make some decisions for them. And understand, put you as the one that's supposed to guide them. Well, I don't believe I need to be that hard, Brother Mascroft. You probably don't believe much of anything then. I don't mean to be, to be uh, hard-nosed or bullheaded. But, you know, if you ask a question, you know, I'll say this. If you want to get some things in the hearts of young people, you better get it in their hearts while they're young. Because, friend, you're, they're, they're in a world right now that everything is working against them, that everything is ungodly, friend. And uh, understand, it's just, just, just not a good day in which we're living in. Hallelujah. So I just want to say once again, to, I'm not, not going to belabor too long, but and I hope I don't have to hit this every service. Amen. But um, let's, let's be what we're supposed to be. I believe we'll see greater moves of God. If we're going to be what we need to be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not only that, but we might be able to keep the secretary around a little bit longer. And not have a nervous breakdown, okay? Amen. Let's stand tonight. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, when I came up in ministry... I was held to a higher standard. I said I was held to a higher standard. You know, how can you lead people if you first can't be the example? How can you tell somebody to do if you can't first be that example? Hey, Amen. I was talking with some men today and uh, and um, been kind of putting my heart out on them and uh, I said let's check the pastor out first to be safe opened up the records and I said this got to stay confidential they opened up the records and I said okay take a look is my wife and am I being faithful to God and I said while we're at it let's hit sister Ethel since she's a secretary Mm. She passed the test. Amen. Being faithful to God. Can we close our eyes right now? Let's just talk to the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. God, in everything, in everything, let us be faithful in whatever we do. I pray, God, let there be a spirit of humble submission. God, let there be obedience and faith in you. 
understanding, God, that you will do everything you said you will do. Amen. Amen. I'll be frank with you. There's times I had my preacher preach. I do have a pastor. And friend, when he preached, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I had to find myself an altar. I wasn't looking for a restroom break. I wasn't looking behind me, but friend, I'll say this. I was searching this old boy on the inside. God, give me one more chance. Give me, God, the chance. I need one more, Lord, if you will, and I'll straighten this thing out. I want to say to those tonight, there's many. Will you allow the Holy Ghost to do what's necessary? I'm going to open these altars right now. I think it'd just be something good if we all would just come and search our hearts. Say, look, Lord. If there's anything that's within, cleanse me. Wash me, Lord. Wash me, God, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
let's thank him right now. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. can't live it for you. You've got to live it yourself. Like I say, I'm very appreciative for those that are very faithful, very loyal to God. Amen.